guys, welcome back to Empower In. My name is Carolyn Porter Thomas. Thank you so much for watching my YouTube channel. So in this video, I wanted to go over some med surge tips. I know a lot of you guys are starting nursing school now and med surge is by far one of the hardest um, areas in nursing school because it goes over as many very complicated disease processes. So in this video, I wanted to go over a condition known as chronic renal failure. And so my goal in this video is to give you like a brief overview and that way when you go to your lecture, you'll have a little better understanding and hopefully it will help you out along the way. If you're just starting nursing school or you're just starting out looking at nursing schools or I don't know where you are in your nursing school journey or if you already are a nurse feel free to watch and hopefully this video will be educational and also entertaining. So I did my best. I worked on it really hard for you. Um, I really hope that you like it. Also stay tuned until the end because I'm going to be having another giveaway on another beautiful little name badge holder and the winner of last week is below in the description section. So without any further ado, let's get started. Chronic renal failure or chronic kidney disease is a gradual continuous functional failure of the kidneys over a number of different months or years. It is mainly caused due to a complication of serious medical condition that many times until complete kidney failure almost no symptoms are seen. Kidneys are equipped with millions of nephrons that continuously filter out and remove waste products and extra fluid from the blood and discharge them as urine. If a nephron is damaged, it cannot function anymore, and so the functioning nephrons carry out the filtering process. But when the number of damaged nephrons are higher than the normal number, the remaining filters cannot take on all the workload, which results into the accumulation of waste products. In turn, this leads to further serious irreversible complications. Kidney damage is measured through the glomerular filtration rate, which will be abbreviated as GFR. This is calculated by considering factors such as blood creatinine test results, age, gender, weight, and body size. Based on the degree of damage, there are five stages of chronic renal failure. Stage 1 is when the glomerular filtration rate or GFR is more than 90 milliliters per minute. Stage 2 is when the GFR is 60 to 89 milliliters per minute. Stage 3 is when the GFR is about 30 to 59 milliliters per minute. And stage 4 shows a severe reduction in function, which is about 15 to 29 milliliters per minute. And stage 5 is the last stage, which is kidney failure, and this is less than 15 milliliters per minute. Causes The major cause of chronic renal failure is an underlying medical complication. Common conditions responsible for kidney failure are diabetes. This is because when the level of sugar in the blood increases, it damages the tiny capillaries in the body as well as the tiny filters in the kidney. Another cause is uncontrolled controlled high blood pressure. High blood pressure weakens, narrows down, and hardens the arteries around the kidney. As a result, the supply of oxygen and vital nutrients to the nephrons are reduced or stopped, leading to its failure of function. Glomerular nephritis is inflammation of the glomeruli, or small blood vessels, of the kidneys. This is observed in many kidney problems. Signs and Symptoms The signs and symptoms of chronic renal failure usually appear at the advanced stages of the condition. The symptoms can include nausea or vomiting, changes in urine production, shortness of breath, fatigue and weakness, loss of appetite, bad breath or a bad taste in the mouth, muscle twitches and cramps, reduced mental sharpness, hiccups, sore feet and ankles, constant itching, and chest pain, and high blood pressure which is extremely hard to control. Diagnostic test. As kidney damage is an irreversible condition, it is better to be detected in the early stages so that appropriate medical measures are taken in order to prevent further damage. Blood tests can include the glomerular filtration rate. This is used to find out the rate of removal of waste products from the body. For a healthy individual, the normal value is usually greater than 90 milliliters per minute. A value less than 60 milliliters per minute means that the kidney is not functioning properly, and any value less than 15 milliliters per minute means that the patient needs an immediate kidney transplant and or dialysis. The serum creatinine is another lab test. Serum creatinine is a waste product removed from the body through urine. A normal Normal creatinine level for women is less than 1.2, and for men it's less than 1.4. Any value higher than these levels indicates that the kidney is not functioning properly and may be the onset of chronic renal failure. A BUN or blood urea nitrogen is also another laboratory value. For a healthy individual, the normal value of blood urea nitrogen is between 7 and 20. Other exams can include a urine test.
chest. During the normal filtration process, protein and blood being too large to pass through the nephrons are kept out of the urine. But when the kidney is damaged, these substances may appear in the urine, which is an indication of kidney disorder. Some imaging tests include an ultrasound, which is used to determine the size and position of the kidneys and the location of any abnormalities such as a kidney stone. A CT scan may also be used, which is used to obtain a clear picture of any obstruction or structural abnormalities of the kidneys. And in some cases, a kidney biopsy may be necessary. Prevention and treatment. Chronic renal failure is irreversible, therefore it is important to employ the treatment as soon as the condition has been diagnosed. Although the damaged nephrons cannot be recovered or restored, it is necessary to prevent the remaining functioning nephrons from shutting down and to slow down the continuous damage as much as possible. A patient diagnosed with chronic renal failure as well as some with high-risk kidney failure are subject to the following preventable measures and treatments. They first include diet modification. This is the primary measure to be taken in order to prevent excessive workload of the kidneys as well as prevent excessive accumulation of waste products in the body. The recommended diet for chronic renal failure is high carbohydrate, low protein, low Low salt and probably less fluid. Also, in order to maintain electrolyte imbalance, the patient may be prescribed medications and supplements to control and treat the condition. Generally, chronic renal failure is caused by other medical complications like diabetes and uncontrolled hypertension. Therefore, it can be controlled by maintaining the normal blood sugar level and by taking prescribed medications for high blood pressure. Lifestyle change is another recommendation. For example, regular physical activity, proper diet, and quitting smoking can have have a positive impact on the kidneys, as well as reducing risk of stroke and other diseases. At the advanced stages of chronic renal failure, such as end-stage renal disease, the patient may be subject to dialysis or immediate kidney transplant. Dialysis is a procedure of filtering the blood using a membrane that functions as the kidney, removing waste products and excess fluid. There are two types of dialysis. The first one is peritoneal dialysis, which is a type of dialysis in which a natural membrane of the abdominal cavity is used as a filter. In this treatment, the fluid is accumulated in the peritoneal space and then drained later. Hemodialysis is another type of dialysis in which a dialyzer is used to filter the blood, removing any waste products or excess fluids. A dialyzer is a coiled membrane that is made up of numerous hollow fibers. It filters out the blood that is pumped by a dialyzer machine. Hemodialysis is usually performed three times per week. A kidney transplant can be done when a living donor, often a relative, or one who has died recently, donates a kidney. Kidney transplants can can allow the treated individual to live a normal life for many years given that the transplant is successful. Now let's go over some NCLEX style questions so that you can gain further understanding. Question number one. Which of the following conditions can predispose chronic renal failure? Select all that apply. A. Diabetes B. Polycystic kidney disease C. Hypertension D. Chronic obstructive pulmonary disease E. Infections or F. Vascular disorders When going through select all that apply questions, you must approach the answer options one by one. In the first option, diabetes, we know that elevated blood sugars can damage the nephrons, predisposing the client to renal failure. This is also true with polycystic kidney disease, which is a hereditary disease in which cysts can form, causing the kidneys to become enlarged. Option E, complications of a serious infection could cause organ failure. Thus, an infection does have the potential to also cause damage to the kidneys. The last option, vascular disorders, can also cause harm because any issues in the blood flow can affect the kidneys. The only option here that is not directly related to chronic renal failure here is options chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. Next question, question number two. Pericarditis can occur as a cardiovascular problem in clients with chronic renal failure. Which of the following is a valid explanation of this. A. It is due to sodium and water retention. B. It is from the activation of the renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system. C. It is due to the irritation of the pericardial lining by uremic toxins. Or D. It is due to fluid overload. So let's go over these answer options. Option A is tempting to choose because it is a major cause of fluid overload and thus chest pain. However, this particular condition is usually associated with CHF and not pericarditis. The second option, activation of the renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system would cause hypertension. Option D is not specific enough and almost identical to option A. The answer therefore is option C, which is due to uremic toxins, which is a major cause of pericarditis patients receiving dialysis. The nurse notes that the client with chronic renal failure would exhibit all of the following signs and symptoms except A, reddish skin color, B, uremic factor, C, flaky skin, or D, 
pitting edema. Going over the different options, option B, uremic vector, defines the type of breath that a patient with chronic renal failure can have. Option C, flaky, itchy skin, is very common in patients receiving dialysis. This is thought to be caused by high levels of phosphorus, which dialysis cannot remove. Option D, pitting skin, can also be common in patients with chronic renal failure. Because the kidneys are not filtering properly, this can allow fluids to accumulate. The only option mentioned here that is not correct is A. Because patients receiving dialysis many times have a gray, bronze-colored skin tone, and rarely is their skin reddish. Alright guys, I really hope you enjoyed that video. Uh, I know that some of the material is a bit advanced, maybe a little bit complicated. I tried to simplify it as much as I possibly could, but indeed you definitely need to study a lot more. Um, if you look below in the description section, you can see how you can get the audio form of this, and you can see how you can get more NCLEX questions related to this subject matter. Guys, listen, questions is the way to go because the more questions you can complete, the better understanding that you'll have. Now I know when you read a a lot of the questions you're gonna be like she didn't talk about this she didn't mention this but honestly that is how the nursing exams are and that's how the NCLEX is it doesn't give you all the information but it just kind of expects you to be able to answer questions <laughs> and I really think that the only way to do well in nursing school and to do well in the NCLEX is to find as many questions as available so we created some questions that you can have access to immediately for free so if you look below in the description section you can see how you can get those right away also for the giveaway we're going to be giving away another beautiful little name holder. Like I said, I have one of these myself. I have a little turtle. It is like the, the cutest thing in the world. These are all handmade by a beautiful nurse. Her name is Angel and I will put her contact information below just in case you don't win but you want to get one for like a Christmas gift or a gift at any time. And for my guys out there, I do want to apologize. I know that this giveaway is a little bit girly but well, I'm a girl and I'm sorry but I love this. So maybe I will try to have a more masculine giveaway in the future but for now, um, I really do hope you like this name badge holders and anyways, so to win the name holder, all you have to do is post a comment. You can do a comment. You can write a video request. You can just say hi and or you can put your favorite positive quote. Either one. I love reading positive quotes. I'm kind of like a quote junkie. True confessions. Sorry. And you also must subscribe to this channel. So just look below in the description section and you can read all of that. All right. I really hope that you like this video and I can't wait to see you again soon. I love you. Bye.